Welcome to NXT July 10th, 2019. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I, I don't mean to laugh, but you gotta understand my point of view of this. The last time I did, I believe, any review or an overview of NXT was nearly three years ago. Easily three years ago. The last time I watched a show of NXT was easily more than a year and a half ago. And there were several things going on. I had a lot of stress in my life. My depression and anxiety was taking a really good grab of me at one point. And a lot of things got lost to the wayside. So NXT was one of them. Also, I was trying reality and wrestling. That didn't get anywhere. And along with that, the one thing that pissed me off about NXT truly pissed me off. And it was not Triple H's work. I want to make this clear. It was not him making the talent. Creating the characters, booking the talent, how the lighting went, how the ring looked, how the video packages were. All of it was fine. When I looked at NXT takeovers, they looked great. The problem was when those talents moved to the main roster. When they moved to the main roster, Raw and SmackDown, I got totally turned off every time when someone came up. Look at Apollo Crews. Look at what happened to... Nikki Cross, to Ascension, to Sanity. Look at Heavy Machinery and the War Raiders. All these different groups that in people, individuals that came up, unless they were very special like a Roman Reigns or very special by like Alexa Bliss or a Charlotte, they had to be something special. Ergo, boobs, blonde hair. I I'm not trying to be racist, just... Unless you looked a certain way, you weren't going to get anywhere. So it completely turned me off, along with all the problems I was having. So now, nearly three years later, at least, or near three years later, I am doing an overview of NXT now. Now, I'm doing only an overview. I'm not doing a review because I need some time to watch the product. If this is going to spark me into going into the side of WWE and probably dropping doing any reviews of SmackDown, and I'm not doing any reviews of Raw, so if I'm going to do any more reviews of Smack, well, SmackDown, maybe it'll be very sporadic, or it might not happen at all if I go to NXT, because I'm not doing like three or four shows in a week. It'll, it'll get burnt out. I tried that. <laughs> For me, I get burnt out. So, what did I think about this episode? It was interesting. The breakout tournament is interesting. It is. Seeing Ba and a guy who reminds me, it could actually be ACH. He's in my face. If this is ACH, he was in Reality of Wrestling. And I remember seeing him in Reality of Wrestling and I thought he looked great. Damien Priest, I think Priest, I can't remember his name. I think his name is Damien Priest. He looks menacing. Ba from China, tall ass guy, looks interesting. The Street Profits. Now, the Street Profits with the other guys, I don't recognize them. <coughs> I don't recognize them, so I can't really talk about the other guys that face the Street Profits. And I got to say this. The last time I looked at NST, I believe the Street Profits had come in, just started, or they had been there for at least a couple of months. So I can't really remember how they were when I first saw them. Here, they look pretty polished. But I really can't say... How I feel about them. One, because I need to watch NXT for a little while. Two, and here's the thing that put me off in the very beginning. They look like they may be heading to the main roster. Yes, they won their match against their, and their, their, the ones they were facing. But the problem for me is this. If the Street Profits are now going to move to SmackDown or Raw. And I don't give a damn what anybody says. Oh, there's going to be... You're going to have Eric. You may have Paul. Don't worry. No. Until we know that Vince will not stop these guys from producing shows they believe are going to help SmackDown and Raw, we do not know if the Street Profits are going to go anywhere. So as far as I'm concerned, if the Street Pro no, I'm not. I'm getting frustrated about the Street Profits because if they're about to go to SmackDown or Raw and Vince is still booking the shows, which it looks like he is, I don't care what anybody says, it still looks like Vince is booking the shows no matter how much or how little Eric and uh, 
I'm, I'm trying to be positive here, but I'm being honest to you guys. Look, with Paul and Eric being in control of SmackDown Raw, it's still about Vince. He makes the final decisions on whatever they do. They can run the show any way they want, but when it goes on TV, he can still override them like this. It will happen. So I don't know how to feel about the Street Profits if they're about to jump to the main roster. If they're staying on NXT, fine. But it was a great match I saw. Killian Dane. This is what I've always talked about. Take something factual and build it around someone. Killian Dane talking about the Irish Republic um, Army. If anybody saw how it was the Irish Republic Revolution back in Ireland, back in the 70s, 80s, into the late 90s before it finally stopped. Having him booked around the Irish Revolution, trying to free themselves from British control, is a great thing to do. The Belfast Brawler, oh, wait a minute, Beast, or whatever, I can't remember it was. The Belfast Brawler, if it was, or the Belfast Beast. It really makes sense for him to be doing that. If he even understood what it felt like with the IRA, dealing with the British, and dealing with their own people, getting possibly his ear messed up because of a pipe bomb explosion. It really fits his character. Now, if only you would have Sarah Logan work with him. That will actually work pretty damn well. But that's just me. Um, when it came to one guy, and this is the thing, I think this is ACH. I can't remember. It's been a while since 2000, was it 16 or 17 when I was watching reality wrestling, I saw ACH. And I thought he was an amazing high flyer. And I'm not a high flyer fan totally. But if this is ACH and he's in my face, going to the main roster, I'm terrified. Going to NXT will fit him nicely. Then you got Bala. Or Bara. Bala, I believe his name is. Ba. I don't even know how to pronounce the guy's name. He's from China. He's super tall. He's pretty damn cool. Their match was very good. It looked way better than what we usually get on the main roster. It looks like Paul is making sure Paul Levesque, Triple H, I know you're not supposed to use the government name. I'm not even using my government name. But, <laughs> but when it comes down to it, you can see that Triple H has booked these guys very well. He's given them open-ended reign to do what they need to do in the ring. Doesn't mean he wants them to break the necks. But you can see what happened with the Street Profits match. This match for the breakout um, breakout um, tournament, it really looks good. Io Shirai, I remember Io Shirai. And I remember she was a face and now she's a heel. Candice DeRay has now been beaten down and Io Shirai basically says, I don't need a friend, I don't need none of you, and dressed so damn right for her attitude. Wearing some tight black pants. Really makes sense. Making it look menacing. Makes sense. Making it look like a badass makes sense. So how did I feel about this episode? It was good. Now, I can't really say it's good, good, or great, or if there was any type of things that were bad, because I haven't seen the product, I don't know what's missing, and I don't know if anything from the other promotions, like what's going to happen with Apollo Crews. I don't know if I got that picture with him going up against some guy who's now undefeated. I don't know how that's going to feel. I don't know the feel of the show now because it's been so long. It looks good. But if I am going to start doing reviews, I really need some... You gotta, got, you guys got to give me some motivation. Yes, I could like the product. But I went through that with Major League Wrestling. I went through that with Reality of Wrestling. And even though I was very enthusiastic, nobody wanted to see it. So give me comments. And I don't normally ask for it. Give me, a, give me a like. Let me know that you really want me to do NXT over SmackDown or Raw. You got to tell me. You, it can't just be one guy or girl. I know it's cool just hearing from one person. I take anything that someone says. But if I'm going to switch from SmackDown to this, I need more than just one person saying, Hey, do it. Do it. Do it now. Do it. I need more than one. So give me a comment. Give me a like or a dislike. I don't care. Just tell me what you want. So I can feel like if this is the right way to go. And here we go.
an NXT overview done. Now, I just wanted to say thank you for what happened with Slammiversary. I don't have to, but I want to say thanks, you know? Thank you for Slammiversary. Thank you for even looking at the video. Whether you liked it or not, you really at least showed me something. And I've seen this a lot in the last couple of months for some of the videos I've done. So, it, honestly, <laughs> I don't like showing my own feelings. But I really do thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.